Hey guys, I actually didn't have plans to make this video until about a week ago. My friend came by and said, hey dude, my 3080 is overheating. Do you think I could drop it off and you can test it, figure out what's going on? I was like, sure. And then he also dropped off this piece of crap Dell desktop. And then he said, yeah, you can mess around with it if you want. Okay, see you, bye. And I'm like, okay. A week goes by, I open up that crappy computer just to see what kind of CPU he has in there. And what do you know, it's an i5 4670K. Some of you are like, oh, okay. But what's cool is that a week before, I made a video about the i5 4690K. So what does this mean? I'm gonna test this hoe. This processor is a year older than the 4690K. It's part of the Haswell series processors, which were actually pretty solid CPUs for gaming. And let's be honest, back in 2013, 2014, Intel kind of ruled the market for high-end gaming. Yes, AMD had their FX processors. Some of them were pretty decent. I actually wanted one. I wanted the FX 8350 Black Edition. I really thought that if I could buy one of those CPUs, I would never need to upgrade ever again. <coughs> We're gonna see if a 10 year old i5 4670K, by the way, I'm overclocking it. I'm actually able to get it to 4.4 gigahertz. Sorry, my cats are fighting. Stop. Anyways, 4.4 gigahertz, which is 0.1 gigahertz. Yeah, 0.1 gigahertz faster than the overclock I had on the 4690K at 4.3 gigahertz. So, we're gonna do some benchmarks, we're gonna do some gaming. It's gonna be at 1080p. If I can hit 60 FPS on these newer games, I'll probably be pretty happy. We'll see if this 10 year old i5 4670K can still game in 2023. It's going to be pretty sicko mode. So before we get started, please like and subscribe. It really helps me out. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And every video I post will be more sicko mode than the last. All right, let's get to it. First things first, let's talk about this processor. So it's a four core, four thread processor with no hyper threading. Back then, all you need for gaming was four cores and decent clock speeds, which 3.8 is not very decent nowadays. But remember, I have a 4.4 gigahertz overclock. Back in 2013 and 2014, these were high-end CPUs. So if you had any of these, you weren't messing around. Maybe you were compensating for something, but it didn't matter. You had the fastest CPUs in town. I would love to get my hands on the i7-4790K, but this will have to do. I'm gonna be honest with you. It's not looking good for this processor, just looking at the specs. And the reason why I say that is that a modern i3 easily outperforms any of these four processors. Once again, the downfall to this CPU is that it's only four cores, zero threads. Back in 2013, hyper-threading wasn't necessary for most games. As long as you had a solid four core processor with a decent GPU, you were pretty solid. Now, let's talk about the build that I have here. It's identical to the 4690K build I had in the last video. Literally, the processors are the only thing that have been swapped out. So I'm cooling the CPU with a deep cool AK620 cooler. Probably my favorite air cooler now. The motherboard is a Gigabyte Z... What the f... Hold on. Sorry. The motherboard is a Gigabyte Z97X Gaming 3 motherboard. And remember, this had an M.2 NVMe slot, so it was way ahead of its time. 16 gigs of DDR3 RAM, a terabyte Samsung 970 EVO Plus. I went with a mid-range GPU, the 3060 Ti. Obviously the CPU is gonna bottleneck this GPU, but if I can get 60 FPS at 1080p with a 10 year old i5 and a mid-level GPU, I'll be happy. 850 watt power supply, and it's all inside of the NZXT 510i case. Now let's talk about some benchmarks. The first test I ran was Cinebench. This is the multi-core test, and I do have the 4690K as well as the 13600K and the 12100F for comparison. And yeah, the 4670K with only four cores, 10 year old architecture, and having no hyper threading, it's clearly showing its age. Now moving on to the single core test, which is most important for gaming. It's much closer to the 4690K, but it's far behind any modern Intel CPUs. I guess we'll see what happens when we game. All right, now let's move on to gaming. And the first game I tested was Shadow 
the Tomb Raider. So 1080p 60 frames per second is the, what the hell? I promise you guys, it was not doing this while I was watching the benchmark. It's honestly hurting my eyes, so I'm just gonna put videos of my cat Klaus while I talk about this game. For some reason, whenever I record, it gets all jumpy like that. But anyways, 1080p 60 frames per second is the goal. The benchmark ended up saying I averaged 81 FPS, but my CPU was at 100% the entire time while my GPU was at 40%. So a severe bottleneck, which I was expecting. But that means during gameplay, when there's scenes with a lot of detail, there's gonna be sudden drops in FPS, which will make the gaming experience not so enjoyable. I'll give you an example when I show Cyberpunk. Technically, it's gameable, but it's just not gonna be an enjoyable experience. Shadow the Tomb Raider may be too much game for the CPU. And what do you know, it doesn't even meet the recommended requirements to play this game. Damn. The next game I ran was Cyberpunk. So this game I did play at low settings, and I made sure ray tracing, DLSS, and all that fancy jazz was turned off. I don't know why I started recently using all that jazz. I don't even like jazz. But anyways, in the benchmark you're gonna see that you're gonna get one of those weird jumps or stutters. Stuff like that was happening throughout the benchmark, and notice that the GPU is around 40% utilization. Those jumps and stutters are caused by your CPU begging you to turn the game off. I mean, you can keep gaming with it, but once again, it's just not gonna be an enjoyable experience with all those stutters. It did manage to finish with 61 FPS, but don't let that fool you. The minimum FPS dropped down to 21 FPS, so it's just not that great. The next game I ran was Red Dead Redemption 2. I ran this game at medium settings, and based off the last two games, I was expecting the CPU to struggle once again. But to my surprise, it was actually pretty smooth. I didn't get any of those weird jumps or stutters like in the other benchmarks. And my average FPS was 63, but if you look at the minimum FPS, it was at 12. So more than likely, you're still gonna get those jumps and stutters. And the final game I ran was GTA 5. Playing this at high settings, MSAA is off. The game isn't as good as it can look, but it's still very playable. Watch right here, you're gonna see one of the cleanest planks I've ever seen. And my FPS was pretty strong throughout my gameplay. Not once did I see a jump or stutter. And because the game is about 10 years old and the CPU is about 10 years old, well, technically the PC version didn't come out until 2015. But anyways, they're both old, and it seems like the processor is designed to handle GTA 5. I had zero complaints, and it was quite an enjoyable day at the beach if I do say so myself. So yes, this processor can definitely handle GTA 5. After all that gaming, after all those tests, you may ask, what does this all mean? And why am I testing 10-year-old CPUs? Well, I gave you the first reason. My friend dropped off this crappy computer and told me to mess around with it, and that's what I'm doing. And I happen to have a compatible motherboard, compatible RAM, and all that jazz. Second reason, it's fun. What is fun? Let me spell it for you. F is for friends who do stuff together. U is for you and me. N is for anywhere and anytime at all. Down here in the deep blue sea. The third reason is I want to see if you can still game with a 10 year old processor and I'm going to stop myself right there. And if you want the short answer, the answer is yes. Now the long answer is a little different. GTA 5 was smooth AF. If you plan on playing Fortnite or CSGO, you know, games that you can play on a TA84, yeah, this processor will definitely handle that. Now will this processor handle most modern AAA titles? No, not really. You saw in Cyberpunk that it was stuttering and jumping. In Red Dead Redemption 2, the minimum FPS dropped all the way down to 12 FPS, which means once again you're gonna get a lot of stuttering, and I've had people leave it in the comments that their newer 4690K is no longer gameable because of that same reason, and that they've recently upgraded. And yes, technically I did get 60 FPS in all the games I tested, but don't let that number fool you. Only GTA 5 was buttery smooth. Now can this problem be solved with a beefier GPU? Like a 3080? Maybe even a 4080? The answer is no. You will get higher FPS, but the i5 4670K is always gonna bottleneck modern GPUs. There's no way around it. So you're still gonna get your minimum FPS really low and have those weird jumps and stutters. Now in 2013, if you were able to get one of these CPUs and overclock it, you were probably a really cool dude because you had one of the best games CPUs out there. Now in 2023, if you're still rocking the 4670K, well, let's just say it's time to upgrade. Now this doesn't mean that all 10 year old CPUs are no longer gameable. So if I can get my hands on an i7 4790K, that might still have a shot at gaming in 2023. So once again, the i5 4670K is technically gameable with some games but I definitely don't recommend it in 2023. But anyways, if you like this content, please like and subscribe. It really helps me out. 
If you have any questions, if you have video ideas, let me know in the comments. Also, if you're still rocking the i5 4670K, even the 4690K, let me know in the comments if it's still working for you, maybe if you're overclocking it, what are your overclock settings? Older technology just fascinates me and it's fun just to bring it out and compare it to the new stuff. But anyways, I'm done talking. Like always, have a sicko mode day. Thank <music> you.